This is Composer Online, and this video is about consecutive and hidden fifths and octaves. The evolution of the consecutive fifth and octave rule dates back to the pre-Baroque era, when polyphonic counterpoint was emerging, and much importance was placed on the individuality of each voice in music with multiple simultaneous voices. Every note contains overtones, the octave being the first overtone, and the fifth being the second overtone. Therefore, if we use a fifth or an octave in a chord, it blends easily with the root of that chord, making it very inconspicuous. So, for example, if two consecutive chords both contain a fifth in the same two parts, then the motion of the fifth will not distinguish itself from the motion of the root. This is contrary to the objective of counterpoint, which is to create strong melodies that are distinguishable one from the other. In this example, only the alto and tenor are being sounded to highlight the effect. Contrary motion, on the other hand, distinguishes the two voices one from the other. Another reason for avoiding consecutive fifths and octaves is that they simply sound hollow due to the duplication of the pre-existent overtone. Therefore, to have two hollow sounding intervals side by side is considered unacceptable and is avoided when writing good voice leading. But what about hidden fifths and octaves? The rule discourages the approach to a fifth or octave by anything other than oblique or contrary motion. If we listen to an example of a hidden fifth, you can hear that there's an ambiguity with where the voices of the first chord are going. Does the G move to a D or to an A? Again, making the voices move in contrary motion helps to distinguish where the voices are going. Over the years, many exceptions to the hidden fifth and octave rule have been introduced, based on the argument that in some instances where a fifth or octave interval is approached by similar motion, which means motion in the same direction, the individuality of the voices was not lost provided one of the voices moved stepwise. This makes sense, since it is less easy to lose track of a voice if it moves a step up or down. Listen to this example. The more liberal theorists say that hidden fifths and octaves are all okay, except for when they occur between the bass and the soprano. This may be for yet another reason. The bass note is rich with overtones, including the overtone of a fifth appearing in the same register as the soprano. This overtone would give the perception of a fifth interval between the bass note and overtone note, moving to another fifth interval between the bass note and the soprano note. This would be unacceptable because of the resulting hollow sounding interval progression discussed earlier in this video. So, while the motivations for such rules are difficult to justify in an era when we are accustomed to pop and folk music which is permeated with parallel chord voicings, it is easy to see how they are very effective in producing good counterpoint with independent sounding inner melodies. Thanks for watching.